This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Sidious, Altius, Zekius. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Get My Way Three Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. The real games are upon us. Uh, yes. I'm not a big sports fan in general, but I do love the quadrennial international sporting event. Yes. Quiz, as to not annoy the Quiz organizing committee. In fact, I'm doing daily coverage on my blog at sfpodcastnetwork.com. Yes. He watches a lot of Quiz. Yeah. Now, there's always scandals and weird things going on surrounding Quiz, mm -hmm. and Rio is no exception, but yes. you've heard plenty about that. About Rio. About Rio. Yes. So let's go back into Queen's history. Okay. All the way back to London in 1908. Ooh. There was confusion in the track and field rules between the U.S. and the U.K. that forced a second run of the 400 meters. What was the uh, confusion? Do it you know? was that there was basically a kind of bumping thing that the U.S. rules allowed, but the U.K. Oh, rules did not okay. allow. Except that other U.S. team members refused to run again in solidarity with the guy who was... They were hassling. So the UK runner won by default. <laughs> so did the US win the first time? Is yeah. that okay? Yeah. <laughs> so especially back then, the rules were kinda higgly piggly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. 1912 Stockholm. This is one of the biggest controversies in Queese history. Mm hmm US decathlete Jim Thorpe was found to have played professional baseball prior to the games, and was stripped of his medals a year later. He barely made any money, mm -hmm. and many others had also played as professionals, and were... I'll have to... Have to uh, you didn't rid of that. Quite, quite say it, but... <laughs> but, uh, but they played under assumed names when they were in professional baseball, and Queese committee kind of looked the other way. <laughs> but because Jim Thorpe played under his real name... Exactly. After a multi-decade effort, his awards were reinstated in, wait for it, 1983. <laughs> yes, and this is really silly. Considering that the U.S. basketball dream team currently is living on a cruise liner in Rio. And, and they're all professional <laughs> athletes who make millions of dollars a year. Right. Well, they may not all make millions of dollars a year. But, but the big ones do. Yeah. 1920 Antwerp. The losers in World War I... Australia, Bulgaria, Hungary, Germany, and Turkey were not invited to participate. Just like, no, we don't want you here. Beginning a long line of politically motivated snubs and boycotts. That doesn't seem right. No, well, they, the rest of the world was kind of mad at them. Yes, but, you know, aren't the Olympics supposed to be, you know, healing wounds? And, you would think. I don't know. 1932, Los Angeles. Finland runner Pavo Nurmi was barred from the games after getting too much money for travel expenses to get to the games. So this was brought up by Sweden. Hey, he got some money for this. And this created a sporting international incident but throughout the 1930s between Sweden and Finland. And you know, that just goes to show the difference when they were actually <laughs> amateur games. Right. Or more professed to be amateur games than today. Exactly. 1936, Berlin. Where to begin? Uh. So, Hitler rose to power after the games were awarded. Mm -hmm. The new regime spent years convincing the Queese Organizing Committee that all was well. Yeah, well, as, as those tends to still happen today. Yes. yes, and they saw the money that Hitler was spending on his games, and they basically let it all slide. Yeah. At one point, the, uh, the head of the committee went to Germany, he was wined and dined, look, everything's fine, there's no issues here. I w I'm wondering if that's when the tradition of bribing officials started. I think it's this right around there, yeah. U.S. and many other countries almost boycotted the event because there were already things going on there, yes. to say the least. Mm -hmm. Germany excluded undesirables from competing, and the actual German team was basically paid for by the government. Mm -hmm. They were all military people. And they were like, except you can go do this 24 hours a day for as long as you need to. Yes. 
In the opening ceremony, many countries seemed to be giving the Nazi salute, but it happens to be very similar to the Queis salute. Ah. <laughs> so they're like, eh. Yeah. But the thing to keep in mind here is much of what we think of when we think Queis came from these games. The torch relay started at that point. The procession of nations, the first live radio and TV were all started in, in Berlin. And frankly, the games might not have survived post-war without it, because there were no games in 40 and 44 because of World War II, mm -hmm. so it was a 12-year lag, and if the Berlin <coughs> had not been so successful... Yeah. But, Ooh. yeah, the double-edged sword here. Yeah. Skipping to 1956 in Melbourne, with multiple boycotts due to political tensions in the Middle East and the Soviet Union. A water polo game between Hungary and the USSR was known as the blood in the water match because the USSR had just violently, like literally, like two weeks before, violently put down a revolt in Hungary. Oh. Hungary wins the game 4-0, to zero, traded punches throughout. Hungarian Irvin Zador left the match with a bleeding gash on his face, and the game was suspended with a minute left. Crowds were moved out by police to, to avoid a riot. And Hungary, of course, then won the gold for it. 1964. Tokyo. Indonesia and North Korea withdrew from the games after they and other socialist countries started a rival event. Mm -hmm. The Games of the New Emerging Forces, or GANEFO. We've never heard of that again, huh? In, in, in 1963. They actually tried to do it again in 67, and it fell apart. So it only was held once. Okay. Also that year, South Africa was banned due to apartheid, and that wouldn't be lifted until 1992. You know, I, I guess I didn't realize that so many countries didn't participate for reasons or another. I mean, I, I was aware of the big, you know, Los Angeles right. one, which we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about. Oh, absolutely, but, but it's there's a history. 1968 Mexico City, the Black Power Salute of U.S. track stars Tommy Smith and John Carlos during the National Anthem. Uh, caused a huge uh, furor here, and it was basically a response to the riots that were currently going on at that time in U.S. cities. And meanwhile, a protest of the Mexican government resulted in a massacre 10 days before the ceremony. So, in Mexico City. Wow. 1972, Munich. Palestinian terrorist Black September took Israeli athletes and officials hostage. And after a botched rescue attempt, 11 were murdered. I remember watching this one. Yeah, because Jim McKay was the voice of the mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, all the t years that ABC held it. And so he's on there with Peter Jennings, who at that point was just like the European correspondent. Mm -hmm. And they were, they didn't have time to get real Real. news guys in there. Yeah. So they became the anchors of this, this horrendous event. So after a halt to the event and a memorial service, the games did resume. There was also the controversial USA-USSR basketball game because of a, sh a faulty shot clock and questionable officiation resulted in a rusky win <laughs> and the U.S. refusing to go to the podium. They just, we are not, there's a, over the public address, we are not coming to the podium because we think we won. It, we were really sore losers at times, weren't we? To the point, it would eventually result in the U.S. Dream Team and the end of true amateur quiz participants. Yeah. <laughs> 1976 Montreal, due to various boycotts, the lowest number of countries since 1960, 22 African countries were out after New Zealand was not excluded after their rugby team played in Sun City. So, New Zealand did a tour... Of South Africa. Africa, so the rest of South Africa said, if you don't kick them out of the Olympics, we're not coming. They didn't come. China skipped after Taiwan was allowed in. Yeah. Now it's been a controversy forever. Meanwhile, Soviet pentathlete Boris Onyshenko used a trick APE, basically with a button on it, that in, in fencing to trick the electronic scoring system to incorrectly detect hits. He went, uh, so he cheated. He cheated. This is also the beginning of cities spending way too much on the games and going into public debt. Quebec spent $1.5 billion and didn't pay off the debt until 2006. So that's 30 years. 30 years 30 later. Years. Why do cities want to host 
1980 Moscow, the Soviet games, had an even higher boycott level after they invaded Afghanistan. Good thing that's all been in resolve yes, now. Uh -huh. Only 80 countries participated, and President Carter included the U.S. in that boycott. 1984 Los Angeles, the Soviets and 14 allies boycotted in retribution to what happened in 1980. Mm -hmm. South African Zola Budd, running for the U.K., tripped U.S. leader Mary Decker in the 300 meters, causing her to lose the race. But was that wasn't a purposeful trip. Well, uh, yeah. we don't know. And the big thing was she, Zola Bud ran barefoot. Ah, uh, yes. I think I remember that. And she was running for the UK instead of South Africa because South Africa is was still not, banned. Is still banned at that point. 1988 Seoul. A lack of major boycotts got the count uh, up to 159 nations, two of which East Germany and the USSR would no longer exist four years later. Mm -hmm. Drug test caught Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson, who was stripped of his gold medal in the, in the 100. Possibly due to wind and dine judges, a South Korean boxer was declared the winner against a U.S. boxer, despite all evidence to the contrary. Mm -hmm. because, and because of that, a new scoring system for boxing was created. Oh. 1992, Barcelona. Russian weightlifter Ibrahim Samadov refused his bronze medal and was banned for life. Was that another one where he thought he should have gotten yep. more? Yep. Okay. 1996, Atlanta. The Centennial Park bombing killed one. An injured 111, security guard Richard Jewell discovered the bomb and got people out, so he was erroneously made the suspect for months. Yeah, that was sad. 2000, Sydney. Bad equipment setup caused many gymnasts to falter and be injured. They basically didn't have the equipment at the right level. And Romanian gymnast Andrea Radican was stripped of her medal after testing positive for pseudoephedrine, an over-the-counter medication. Think Claritin Sudafed. <laughs> Marion Jones was stripped of five track medals after taking performance-enhancing drugs. This took three years for the investigation, so, like, in 2003, she lost the medal. We're really seeing more drug infractions we at this point. Certain, to the point where I, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping the ones that aren't interesting. Yeah. <laughs> incorrect marks in, gym, in, in 2004 Athens. Incorrect marks in men's gymnastics were left in place, giving South Korean Yang Tae-young the bronze instead of gold. The leader in the marathon was attacked by a defrocked priest and dragged into the crowd. He wound up with the bronze. This is the guy who just lit the torch in Rio. Oh, okay. A show jumper horse tested positive for drugs. Oh, goodness. An errant whistle from the crowd confused a Greece-U.S. volleyball match, giving U.S. the win. Mm -hmm. An Iranian judoist was disqualified for being overweight. He binged the night before as protest for the... Uh, the Queen's Organizing Committee's recognition of Israel. So he did it on purpose. On purpose. Hmm. 2008, Beijing. Two Chinese gymnasts may have been underage, like 14 and the limit is 16. <laughs> Cuban taekwondist Angel Metos was banned for life after kicking a referee in the face and then punching oh another. Oh, gosh. <laughs> banned for life. <laughs> 2012, London. The logo for the games was so frenetic that it caused epileptic seizures when animated. <laughs> North and South Korean flags were confused, causing a one-hour delay in a women's soccer match. Oh. People are crazy about their flags. British cyclist Philip Hinde supposedly crashed on purpose to restart a match. And this is a pattern in this Olympics. Chinese and South Korean women's badminton contenders tried to purposely lose to get a better draw in later rounds. <laughs> And an Algerian runner quit 200 meters into an 800 meter race to save himself for a later 1500 meter race. Officials couldn't get him withdrawn in time for that first race, so he ran anyway, ran a certain distance, and then walked off and said, "Okay, uh, I'm done." He later actually won the 1500 meter. Well, okay, I'll give him that. <laughs> Scandals are rife at Indeed. the quiz. Indeed. Um, you can continue watching the quiz on NBC, or you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.